Bismillahirrahmanirrahim and uh, welcome back to this next video and this is the uh, last video in the series of videos on the uh, sickle cell anemia. Now in this particular video I want to focus on the symptoms of the sickle cell anemia. Uh, in my previous videos I've told you that what is sickle cell anemia, uh, what causes the sickle cell anemia and the inheritance pattern of the sickle cell anemia and then the diagnosis of the sickle cell anemia and uh, I'll share the uh, links of all videos in the description. So when you talk about the symptoms of the sickle cell anemia, uh, the first important symptom of the sickle cell anemia is anemia. Now what does this anemia mean? It actually means a uh, lower number of the red blood cells. Now what happens is that the normal red blood cell, they live for about 120 days but the uh, sickle cells, they usually die in 10 to 20 days, leaving a shortage of the red blood cells. And the shortage of the red blood cells is actually called is the anemia because the lifespan of the uh, sickle red blood cells that is very low as compared to the normal RBCs. So, so there is shortage of the red blood cells in the patients of the sickle cell anemia. Now, when there is shortage of the uh, uh, red blood cells, that means that uh, there will be no enough red blood cells your body can't be getting in enough oxygen so if your body is not getting enough oxygen that means it is not producing enough energy hence the patients of the sickle cell anemia they are actually feeling fatigue uh, because the red blood cell they are the carrier of the oxygen and the oxygen is actually responsible for the formation of the energy so if there is shortage of energy the patients they are going to feel fatigue the second important symptom of the sickle cell anemia and they are known as the pain crisis or sometimes they are also known as the period of the pains. Now the pain crisis that lasts a few hours to a few weeks and it varies in intensity. So in different uh, sickle cell anemia patients uh, in different conditions the pain crisis they can last for a few hours uh, or for to a few weeks and the intensity of the uh, pain crisis that is variable in different patients of the sickle cell anemia. Now this pain develops when these uh, sickle shaped red blood cells they block the blood flow through the capillaries to your chest the abdomen joints and bones so when the uh, there is blockage of the blood to these uh, parts of your body like the chest abdomen the joints and the bones the patient is going to feel pain now some people uh, have only a few pain crises a year other uh, patients of the uh, sickle cell anemia they may have dozen or more pain crises a year and the uh, severe pain crisis they sometimes requires hospital stay as well so the uh, period of the pain or the pain crisis that is very much variable depending on the uh, uh, depending on the type of the patient and the uh, and it varies from patient to patient in the sickle cell anemia uh, another important uh, symptom of the sickle cell anemia is the swelling in hands and feet and the swelling is uh, usually caused when the sickle shaped red blood cells they are blocking the blood flow to your hands and uh, feet so the pain and the swelling in the hand and feet is actually because of the blockage of the blood flow to these particular organs of your body frequent infections are also reported in the patients of the sickle cell anemia uh, because the sickle cell they can damage your spleen leaving you more vulnerable to infections now doctors commonly give infants and children with uh, sickle cell anemia vaccination and antibiotics uh, to prevent potentially life-threatening infections uh, such as the pneumonia so as compared to the normal individuals you will be seeing these uh, frequent infections in the patients of the sickle cell anemia and they need more vaccination and antibiotics as compared to the uh, normal individuals uh, another important symptom of the sickle cell anemia is that there is delayed growth or puberty and the reason is very obvious. The RBCs they are going to provide energy and oxygen to your body and when the uh, RBCs they are not present in the uh, enough quantity so there will be shortage of the healthy red blood cells 
and that can actually slow the growth in infants and children and it hence can cause a delay in the puberty in the teenagers because the body is not getting enough oxygen the body is not getting uh, enough nutrients for the growth so when they are not available there is actually delayed growth or puberty uh, in the patients of the uh, in the sickle cell anemia patients there are also vision problems in the uh, sickle cell anemia patients uh, because the uh, capillaries uh, that supply blood to your eyes that can become plugged with the sickle cells and when there is plugging of these uh, capillaries uh, in the uh, eye this can damage the retina and retina is actually the portion of the eye that processes visual images and it can lead to vision problems uh, the other types of the, the other symptoms that you can actually uh, see sometimes in the patients of the sickle cell anemia uh, one is known is the uh, preapism and this preapism is actually a lingering a painful erection that can be seen in some men with the sickle cell disease and this actually happens when the blood vessels in the penis they are blocked and it can actually lead to the impotence if it uh, if this problem is left untreated Sometime in the patients of the sickle cell anemia, uh, you will be seeing these gallstones. Now, these gallstones, they are actually not caused by the uh, blockage of the vessel. Instead, they are caused by the breakdown of the RBCs. As I've told you that the uh, abnormal uh, red blood cells, uh, the uh, sickle cell red blood cells, their lifespan is very short, like 10 to 20 days. So they will be broken down. And when these RBC, they are broken down, the byproduct is actually bilirubin. So the high levels of these bilirubin, they can lead to the gallstones. Uh, and these are, uh, there are also some, uh, you can say pigment stones uh, in the uh, patients of the uh, sickle cell anemia. So the gallstone is not because of the blockage of the vessel. It is because of the uh, breakdown of the abnormal RBCs, which is going to increase the level of the bilirubin in the body. Uh, sometimes skin ulcers are also reported in the patients of the sickle cell anemia and the skin ulcers in the legs can occur if the small vessels they there they are blocked so uh, one of the main reason is that uh, the lifespan of these rbcs of the sickle cell rbcs that is short secondly the sickle shape they are going to block the blood vessel and this blockage of vessel can lead to many complications in the sickle cell anemia patients now, what are the treatment options for the uh, sickle cell anemia? Uh, one of the important treatment options is uh, rehydration with intravenous fluids uh, and these uh, rehydration that can actually help RBC return to a normal state. Now, these RBC, they are more likely to deform and assume the sickle shape if you are dehydrated. So, the shortage of the water in the body that can actually uh, lead to the RBCs in the sickle form, which can actually cause the uh, blockage that we just discussed and that blockage can cause many problems in the sickle cell anemia patients. Uh, another important thing is that there are, as I've told you, frequent infections in the sickle cell anemia patients. So treating these underlying or associated infections uh, is really important uh, for managing the crisis uh, as the stress of an infection can result in the sickle cell crisis as well. So an infection may also result as a complication of a crisis. So uh, when the patients of the sickle cell anemia, they are infected, they should be treated on priority basis uh, by the use of the antibiotics or other medicines as prescribed by the uh, physicians. The blood transfusion that can also improve the transport of the oxygen and nutrients. So this is also one of the uh, available treatment option. And these uh, packed red cells, they are removed from the uh, donated bloods and they are given to the patients because the patients of the sickle cell anemia, they are only deficient in the red blood cells. So the red blood cells or the packed red cells, they are removed from the uh, donated blood and they are given to the patients. Uh, supplementary oxygen is sometimes given through a mask and it is uh, making breathing easier and improve oxygen levels in the blood. Uh, as I've told you that the uh, pain crisis or the pains in the sickle cell anemia is a very uh, common symptom uh, in most of the patients of the sickle cell anemia. So pain medication, they are used to relieve the pain uh, during a sickle cell crisis. And the most common uh, medication, pain medication that are used for the sickle cell anemia patient, one is the uh, troxia and the other one is hydria. 
uh, what these medicine do that they uh, on one side are going to decrease the pains but they are also helpful in increasing the production of the fetal hemoglobin so this fetal hemoglobin they are very important because as compared to the other hemoglobin this fetal hemoglobin have got high affinity for the oxygen so they can be a better supplier of the oxygen uh, in the body of the sickle cell anemia patient and the droxia and the hydria they can actually help increase in the production of the fetal hemoglobin uh, these medicines they can also reduce the number of the blood transfusions and the uh, pain crisis. Immunization is also an option because uh, is the patients of the sickle cell anemia the immunity is decreased as compared to the uh, other individuals so immunization can also help prevent the infections and patients tend to have a lower immunity in the uh, sickle cell anemia. Now, bone marrow transplant that, had, uh, that has been used to treat sickle cell anemia and children younger than 16 years of age uh, who have severe complications and have a matching donor, they are the best candidates for the bone marrow transplant. So all of these uh, treatment options that we just discussed, they are not actually the uh, treatment, but they are decreasing the uh, symptoms of the sickle cell anemia. Uh, one of the uh, treatment in the real sense is uh, that will be the gene therapy. Now, what does gene therapy simply mean is that you are replacing the mutant gene with a normal gene. So, in the case of the sickle cell anemia, as you know that there is a mutation in the beta globin gene uh, where the glutamic acid is replaced by the valine because of this mutation. So, if you are able to replace that mutant gene with a normal gene, you will be having a normal beta globin chain and the red blood cells they will be in the normal round shape and not in the uh, crescent or the sickle shape thereby you can solve all of the problem but the thing is that gene therapy is in in its infancy uh, the uh, success rate they are very low but a lot of work is uh, going on uh, is in the gene therapy for the treatment of the uh, genetic diseases uh, for example the sickle cell anemia so this is the actual treatment the gene therapy we are where you are actually replacing the mutant gene which is creating the problem with the normal copy and if you are successful in doing that all of the uh, associated uh, uh, problems of the sickle cell anemia they can be sorted out um, the home care is also very important uh, uh, in the home care what you can do is that uh, if there is pain crisis you can actually use the heating pads for the relief of the pain uh, you can actually take the folic acid supplements as recommended by your doctor because these folic acid supplements it can help in the formation of the heme uh, which is the pigmented iron containing portion of the hemoglobin so the folic acid supplement they can also be uh, helpful in the minimizing the symptoms of the sickle cell anemia uh, the patients of the sickle cell anemia they should eat uh, an adequate amount of the fruits vegetables and the whole uh, wheat grains in doing so can help their body make more rbcs thereby minimizing the symptoms uh, the patient of the sickle cell anemia should drink more water to reduce the chances of the sickle cell crisis because as i've told you that uh, dehydration is also a problem in giving the red blood cells a sickle shape uh, regular exercise can uh, reduce the stress and it can also reduce the pain crisis in the uh, sickle cell anemia patients and contact your doctor immediately if you think you have any type of infection because the immunity is weak so you uh, should uh, uh, directly get uh, medical attention if you feel that you have got an infection because uh, if you are not treating that uh, particular infection that can uh, go to more serious consequences and early treatment of an infection they may prevent a full-blown crisis now how you can prevent the sickle cell anemia uh, the genetic diseases uh, by 2021 uh, they are not treatable uh, the gene therapy is an option but that is uh, you can say still an experimental science so uh, the best strategy for the sickle cell anemia is prevention uh, if, if you carry the sickle cell trait uh, by that i mean that uh, the sickle cell anemia is an autosomal recessive disorder in which both of the copies of the beta globin gene they are mutated so the sickle cell trait means that you have got one normal copy and you have got one mutant copy of the beta globin gene so if you carry the sickle cell trait you should consult a, a genetic counselor before trying to conceive and it can actually help you uh, understand 
uh, the risk having a child with the sickle cell anemia and this can uh, they can also ex explain possible treatment preventive measures and uh, reproductive options so if both of the parents they are the carrier so they will not be showing any symptoms but there are chances that some of the offsprings they will be the patients of the sickle cell anemia so the genetic counselor can actually help you uh, discuss the uh, reproductive options so uh, if you like the video uh, please subscribe to my channel hit the like button and share it with your friends